Hi, I'm Brian Faulkner, and this is my book, Brain Jack. Let me read you the blurb. In cyberspace, everyone can hear you scream. Las Vegas is gone, destroyed in a terrorist attack. Black Hawk helicopters patrol the skies over New York City. Immersive online gaming is the most dangerous street drug around. In this dystopic near future, neuro headsets have replaced computer keyboards. Just slip on a headset and it's the internet at the speed of thought. For teen hacker Sam Wilson, an incursion against the world's largest telecommunications company leads him to the heart of the nation's cyber defense network and brings him face to face with a terrifying and unforeseen threat. I'd like to read a, a couple of passages from this. So we'll start with the prologue. Right now, as you read this prologue, I'm sifting through the contents of your computer. Yes, your computer. You, the one holding the book. I'm reading your emails, looking at your digital photos and images you've downloaded off the net, opening your most private documents and having a good read or a good laugh, depending on the content. To be honest, most of it is utterly boring, except for a few files. You know the ones I mean. I know you don't believe me, and I prefer it that way, but think about this. When you bought this book, you, or the person who bought it for you, used a credit card or a debit card. That created a record in the massive computer systems that the banks use, the systems they claim are impregnable, but they're on the net, and nothing is impregnable on the net. So I monitored those systems for transactions with the ISBN of this book. That's the International Standard Book Number. You'll find it on the publisher's imprint page on page 4. Have a look now. It's 978-064-828-79-7-1. When your transaction went through, I got an alert from one of my monitoring programs, and as I had nothing better to do, I dug a little deeper. I got the credit card number from the transaction log, and that, with just a quick poke around in the highly secure databases of the bank, gave me your home address and telephone number. I cross-matched that with the internet service providers in your area to find your broadband connection. Then I checked to see if you have a static IP. That's the electronic address of your home computer. You don't. So I raided your ISP's DHCP server to get your current IP. It didn't take me very long to find out where your computer lives on the internet. Your router's firewall was a joke, and not even a very funny one. The built-in firewall on your PC was another story, though. That held me up for a couple of heartbeats. I had to use your peer-to-peer file-sharing client to slip a Trojan past your security and gain remote administrator access, shape-shifting a little as I did so, so as to not attract attention from your antivirus software. No matter, it took me less than 10 minutes from seeing the transaction to obtaining complete access to your hard drive. So now, while you're reading this, I'm looking through your computer and having a great old time. You could race over and turn your computer off, but you'd already be too late. I could delete a few files, but I probably won't. I could change your passwords and lock you out of your own system, but I can't be bothered. And I won't crash your system or delete the contents of your hard drive or anything like that. I'm not malicious or evil or even particularly bad. I'll just quietly leave and erase all trace that I was ever there. But I know you now. I know who you are. I know where you live. I know what you've got. And if the time comes that I need something from you, something that you might or might not want to give up, I'll be back. And that time is coming, sooner than you think. But in the meantime, don't worry about me. I'm not worrying about you. Right now... I've got much bigger problems to think about. Book One, Beginnings. On Friday, on his way to school, Sam Wilson brought the United States of America to its knees. He didn't mean to. He was actually just trying to score a new computer and some other cool stuff. And in any case, the words, to its knees, were the New York Times, not his, and way over the top in Sam's view. Not as bad, though, as the Washington Post, 
their headline writers must have been on a coffee binge because they screamed national disaster in size 40 type when their presses finally came back online. Anyway, it was only for a few days and it wasn't really a disaster at all, at least not compared to what was still to come. And now jumping to a chapter called The Raid. Here they come, Dodge said, and they're coming in heavy. Listen up, Jagard said from the centre of the room. This is no stealthy, crawling, under-the-wire incursion. It's a full-on cyber attack, and the targets are nuclear reactor sites. We're covering Peach Bottom, Dodge said, since we know it best. We're going in battle group formation. Vienna and Kiwi are covering our 10 with zombie and gummy in reserve. Stay on my tail and keep those bugs off my ass. Sam glued his eyes to the screens and wished for his neuro headset despite what Dodge had said. The keyboard and mouse were just too slow and cumbersome. What are they after? Vienna's voice sounded in his ear. They can't bridge the air gap. We already checked that. Maybe they know something we don't, Sock's raspy voice said. Dodge said, they're after something, or they wouldn't be coming in this hot and hard. Let's kick them in the bollocks first of all, then try and figure out their game plan. Where are they coming from? Vienna asked. Working on it, Kiwi replied. I'm going to try and take back the main router, Dodge said. As soon as I hit them, their bugs are going to be all over me. Sam, I'm depending on you. I'm there, Sam said in a quiet voice. Vienna, you lead with a diversionary attack on the internet gateway, Dodge said. Make them think we're coming in through the roof. Stay sharp. Sam kept one eye on his left monitor, following what Dodge was doing, and the other on his scanners on the right. They had drilled and drilled over exactly this scenario, running simulations and game plans against their simulator computer and against each other. But this was no game. This was real. Dodge was going in to root out the malicious code on the main router, but in doing so he was exposing himself to attack. Sam's job was to cut that attack off at the knees. There you are, you slimy prat, Dodge said. Big mother of a Kandiru fish hiding in the swap file. I'm going to hit it with a depth charge. Vienna, zombie, get on the nodes around me and watch for wrigglers. Sam watched as the swap file dissolved, crumbling in on itself as the depth charge imploded in its midst. Flashing red lights immediately appeared on his TCP scopes. I got predators, he shouted. Keep them off me, Dodge yelled back. I've got corruptions everywhere. I've got to stay on this. The hackers were honing in the source of the depth charge, Dodge. Predator programs designed to trace Dodge's signal back to its source and attack it there. Sam keyed his weapon systems, readying a freeze bot. Whatever server the Predator was on, the bot would freeze the central processor, running the CPU around in circles until it was barely alive. Once the server was frozen, he could scan the drive, find and analyse the Predator, which would be icebound unable to shapeshift and easy to detect. Once he had its genetic structure, its central code, he would feed that into the proximity detectors of his sidewinders. The lights on his scope flashed brilliant red as one of the predators streaked across the screen, honing in on Dodge's code trail. Ouch! Dodge cried. Something just bit me, switching nodes now. Sorry, Dodge, Sam said. Had to let him bite to see where he was coming from. He hurled the freeze bot at the Predator, a nasty, writhing, malicious bit of code that had burrowed into an email server in Kentucky. He isolated the code quickly and scanned it in, analysing it line by line himself, not just relying on the automated code scanners built into his system. Hurry it up, Sam, Dodge said. I'm getting more nibbles here. Almost got it. Sam said, feeding the digital DNA of the creature into his master weapons control. Okay, code's in the wire, fellas. Lock and load. Let's blast these guys out of the sky. Got it, Gummy and Kiwi both said as they loaded their warheads with the information. I got crawlers all over the place, Vienna said. I'm going to need a big cold can of whoop-ass down here. Sam focused on the red predator alerts on his scope, tracing the trail through the complex nodes of the internet, narrowing down the location of the intruders. The one he was chasing disappeared, flitting out through an open port just before he could hit it. Hold still, you mongrel, he said to himself as he fired a sidewinder through the same port. There was a flash on his scope as he did so. Gotcha! Good work, Sam, said Dodge, but there's plenty more where that came from. 
The sidewinder was one of the most basic of weapons, but highly effective. Its proximity fuse meant that if it got even close to a predator, it would explode, simply wiping all the data off the RAM sector where the predator code was. It could cause havoc for the owner of that computer, but that's what backups were for, right? Sam fired off a few more sidewinders in the general direction of the other predators, hoping he might get lucky. The missiles were coded for the DNA of the predator and would just circle around in an ever-increasing spiral, trying to home in on the signature. If they didn't find it, they'd eventually self-destruct. Bullseye! Gummy Bear's voice came into his ear, and one of the red dots disappeared from his scope. Sam hammered a stream of sidewinders into the offices of a small ISP in New York and was rewarded with a series of flashes as the missiles took out their targets. I got the source, Kiwi shouted. It's right here in the States, Chicago. Server cluster in a warehouse registered to a shipping company. Looks like it was purpose-built for the attack. Main router is clear, Dodge said, and inoculated. How's the rest of the network? Getting there, Vienna said. Zombie added, is the air gap holding? Don't know, Dodge said. Somebody get on a landline to the site. Check with their techs if there's anything suspicious in the wagon circle. You should see this place, Kiwi said. It's swarming like a wasp's nest. Sam saw it too. He unleashed a string of sidewinders into the heart of the cluster, but even as he did so, his scope exploded into a fireworks display of coloured sparks. Oh, crap, he said. What's going on, Sam? Dodge asked. It's like a zoo down there. Sam said, and I think we just fell into the snake pit. There's got to be a million of them. Stay calm, Vienna said. Scan them, read them, shut them down. They'll come in waves, but there can't be that many different kinds. There are too many, Gummy Bear yelled. We can't hold them. You got the address of the warehouse, Dodge asked. I got it, Kiwi shouted. Take out their power, now. Get into the nearest substation and kill their power lines. Take out the whole block if you have to. Vienna, notify Chicago PD and get the location to tactical. Sam slashed his way into the storm of predators. There were all types, vipers, rabid dogs, shooters, blockers, vampires, and other kinds he'd never even seen before. One by one, he said to himself. Take them, one by one. Power's out, Kiwi yelled, but they're still streaming. They must be on UPS. Let me have a go at it, Sam called. Okay, Sam, it's yours. He scanned the warehouse with a heat sensor, ignoring the haze of marauders buzzing through the networks around him. The UPS showed up clearly, and he ran its signature through a pattern matching program, comparing it to an equipment database. It's an HVC 9001, Sam said. It's got power line networking. I can take this baby out. Kiwi, I need the power back on for a moment. Can you do it? Just say when. Hang on. Hang on. Okay, now. Count to three, then shut it off again. The 9001 had built-in power line networking, enabling it to communicate directly through the power cables. Sam grabbed the latest firmware updates from the HVC download site and modified the code just slightly before updating the firmware on the motherboard. Give it 10 seconds, then pump it with all the juice you can. I took out the voltage limiter. Dodge breathed. It'll go sky high. Going to give them a mother of a power spike, Kiwi called out. In three, two, one, take that, you code suckers. The red hot core at the center of the storm on Sam's scope blinked once and disappeared. He could just imagine what the overloaded spike of electricity had done to the UPS system without a voltage limiter in place to protect it. At the very least, it would have melted down. With luck, there might have been an explosion. The swarms of predators still circled, but aimlessly, without intelligence behind them to direct them. Good work, team, Dodge said. Let's clean this up. I want those predators classified, neutralized, and stuck on a bulletin board in the lunchroom before those filthy geezers can pick themselves up off the floor and try again. Sam grinned. He had done well. He knew that. New kid on the block, and he had a movement caught his eye, and he half turned just in time to see a black command window appear and disappear on his left side screen. Dodge. He said in a voice that was not as steady as it should have been. What is it, Sam? I think I just got infiltrated. Not possible, Sam. Not in here. But Sam was cut off by a shout from the other side of the room. I got a blue screen of death over here. What's going on? Crap, me too, Vienna said. I just got wiped. Sam looked around and saw Jaggard sprinting across the room towards them. Shut them down, he shouted. Shut them down now.